Hi, I'm Jason Rink, and tonight we've got John McAllister, city councilman for uh, Columbus Suburb, Gahanna in Ohio. And tonight we're going to talk about just uh, politics at the local level. Uh, John, thanks for coming out tonight. Um, there's a quote on your website, uh, localpoliticians.net, which says basically that the American Republic will endure uh, until Congress realizes they can bribe the public with their own money. Um, what, what, why do you have that on your uh, website, and how does that connect to what you're talking about uh, as far as local politics and how that's connected with federal politics? Okay, well, that's exactly what's going on today. Uh, the federal government puts a gun to everybody's head and says, we want your money, and if you don't pay it to us, you know what happens. Right. And then they take our money and then bribe us with bike paths, with safe sidewalks to school, sure. with police radios, with this, that, and the other thing. And I'm just talking what happens at the city level. You know, we haven't even gotten into uh, the schools. Right. That's another whole topic. Right. But there is nothing in the Constitution of the United States that says that Congress should be giving money to cities. Right. Under any, it's in Article 1, Section 8. So what does this all mean? As a, as a politician, when you're sworn into office, whether it's at the city level, the county level, state level, you swear an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of your state, and maybe your charter of your city. Sure. So what does this oath mean? Is it just a hollow piece of paper, just a hollow thing that people uh, say, oh, yeah, I'll uphold you? And then it means nothing. Right. So this year, uh, or last year, I should say, 2009, I said, you know, I'm going to uphold my oath. I'm not going to vote on any city ordinance where the money funding the project is coming down from the federal government. How can I possibly uphold the oath to the Constitution and at the same time violate Article 1, Section 8, sure. the enumerated powers of Congress? That means I've had to vote no on police radios, uh, police cruisers because they were buying it with drug money, which is a totally unconstitutional thing. I had to vote no on a $400,000 grant to build a bike path in Gahanna. Now, I'm sure those people out in Podunk, Idaho, who that paid their taxes felt that they needed to build bike paths in Gahanna, Ohio. Sure. Okay, and on and on and on and on and on. I mean, we're just a little city of 35,000, but we, we soak up hundreds of thousands of dollars of federal money in direct violation of the Constitution of the United States. And, and what it becomes is sort of this, this, this game where game. The, the, government flows into the, uh, the money flows into the federal government, and then you've got all of these localities sort of doing everything they can to bring as much of that right. back as they can. If Gehanna wanted to build a bike path, the money was already in Gehanna. Right. Why did we have to send it to Washington, D.C., only to come begging for it to say, hey, you know, a bunch of our folks that live here, they've designed a park plan and they decided they want to have a bike path. Right. Well, we should fund it ourselves. Right. So how do you correct all this? Right. The way you correct it is you get all of the people out there in this audience and beyond you take the audience of the Rush Limbaugh, the Glenn Beck, the freedom movement, right. if you will. There's millions of people. If you just took two or three or four or five million people and they started showing up at their local city councils with this in hand. Right. And when the ordinance comes before uh, the council for a vote that night. Right. Right. Uh, People confront them. Yeah, and, and, he's, and they say, where's that? Where is that in, in the Constitution? Excuse me, Mr. Politician, Mr. Councilman. Uh, as I recall, you took an oath when you took office to uphold the Constitution. By voting on this ordinance tonight, you are in direct violation of that oath. And I want to hold you accountable, sir. It's interesting. This is, this is very interesting because what people do is they typically get mad at Congress for all of their overspending. But the fact of the matter is, is you've got people at the local level. Again, the whole system is, is really... So, come on down, down, come on down. Right. Yeah, you, so what you've got to do is you've got to stop the people at the local level right. for really getting Congress to violate the Constitution. Again, it's, it's, right. it's people because on both sides that are not taking these the federal seriously. These federal politicians in the House and the Senate are doing just what de Tocqueville said back in the 1800s. They're bribing the people with their own money, and that will lead to the downfall of the republic. Right. Well, and so when we talk about holding local politicians accountable, wh what are you suggesting? You're suggesting that reg regular people, rather than getting so wrapped up in what's going on at the federal level, we need to spend a little time looking at the local level. We need to spend a lot of time because then when your local politician comes up for election, I, I'm up for election every two years. 
What if I had been violating this oath, you know, consistently for the last two years, and somebody in my ward decides, you know what, that Mr. McAllister, he he doesn't really take his oath seriously. Right. I'm going to run against him. Right. And you, Jason, could run for city council and get elected because you understand what's in this constitution, right. and this sells. Right. You know, Ron Paul proved that in his in his campaign. And it sells at the local level. And and you're also suggesting that really. The local level is really the, the doorway, it's the entryway for politics on every level. Sure. I mean, where do your state politicians come from? Most of them come from local uh, politics, you know, city councils, county commissioners, maybe township trustees. And then where do your, where, our own congressman, Pat T. Berry, you know, where was he before he was a congressman? Right. Yeah, you know, he was a, a state representative in the, in the Ohio legislature. Right. So... You know, I've been asked to run for the state legislature, and you know, you know, I won't do it. I mean, I, I, I've got all I can handle right here. Right. But the idea is, is that people are policy, and so if we want to change the people at the highest levels of government, and if we want to change um, and make sure that people are adhering to their oaths of office, right. What we need to do in America is we need to start thinking small, because thinking small is really thinking big. Thinking in the long big, run. yeah. Like, like uh, you know, all politics is local. We've heard that saying. Well, mm-hmm. it means that if you can get a guy standing up on a stump and saying, you know, if you elect me, I'll make sure that I bring the bacon home back to right. Columbus or back to Ohio or whatever it is. That is that is uh, that is just so morally wrong. Right. So what are you hoping to do? When did you you set up this website? Are you just hoping to get the word out to okay. people? Okay. Yeah, here's the other that? beauty of this, Jason. Yeah, I've put an essay on this website, you know, how to get back your constitution by holding local politicians Mm -hmm. accountable. This is not a magic bullet, a silver bullet, an overnight thing. It's going to evolve. But what's beautiful about it is it requires no leadership. Mm -hmm. It requires no money. Because all you have to do is read what's in the article. There's an action plan in there. And all you have to do is follow it. You might just be one person out there watching this right now. You can ask your neighbors, do you think our congressman or our, I mean our, our uh, city councilman should uphold their oath to the Constitution? If they say yes, you've got a chance at a convert. Right. <laughs> now you've got two people. Right. And two can become four and four can become eight and so on. And pretty soon, these people on council, they start getting gun shy. They say, oh my gosh, here they come. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and so what we could see is we could really see a revolution in this country where people started seeing their civic duty of showing up at the city council meetings and and really just showing up just, just showing being up there and and those council members knowing that those people are there to make sure that they uphold their oath and that if they don't there's going to be consequences cuz some of those same people can go out there and they can rally the troops people that are in the liberty movement to back them to possibly run for city council against those Absolutely I mean uh, city council meetings are open to the public in, in our city of Gehanna, we meet every other Monday and have a formal meeting and we right. vote on ordinances. On the opposite Mondays, we have committees where we review the ordinances that we're going to be voting on. Okay, Those are open to the public. That's not a, that's just, you can sit there and observe. It's really our own committee meeting right. so we can discuss among ourselves. But then in our meetings, every other Monday night, we have a hearing of visitors. And anybody can come to that meeting. They have three minutes and they can say anything that's on their mind. <laughs> and, and they do, okay? Most of the time, it's about street lights that are out right. or dogs that are barking or this or that. But this, ladies and gentlemen, this is the most important thing that anybody can get upset about well, is when people are violating this. And, and so what you've got is you've got the city council meeting that's really like the, it's, it's, an, it's the town hall. Yeah. And it's a place where people can come. They can learn the basics about how to how politics works. Yeah. They can learn about some of the, the, uh, the, the order of things, how that all runs. At the same time, have a chance to be heard, hold your local politicians accountable, and have a chance in influencing who are going to be our new state reps and our congressmen. Uh, the website is localpoliticians.net. .net. Again, John McAllister, thanks for coming out and sharing your passion about the Constitution, and we're thankful to have people like you in there upholding your oath of office. Thank you, Jason. Keep up the good work. Yep.